our next topic of discussion, as Mairead says, we're going to we're going to talk to people who have been involved heavily in the machinery industry in Ireland, and we're very lucky to have two of the our lead manufacturers and uh, a representative who, wor who worked and pro progressed his career all the way up to Agco, which is one of the biggest agricultural, co agricultural machinery companies in the world. Um, I guess what we're going to try to get the feel of today is how, how they developed their careers and uh, what potential is basically out for you as graduates and for people who want to work in the industry as well. So I suppose the um, question to all of them, I might start with uh, William first, is um, your background, William. You're working, you're the, the sales manager for the Ireland and uh, the UK for the Massey Ferguson brand. Um, yeah, I suppose, look, I started, as, as James said, I'm the national sales manager for Massey Ferguson. I cover the UK and Ireland. Um, we have a team of about 13, 14 people, and then we obviously have a service team of a similar size. Um, so I started out, I'll get a family, grew up a country family, country living, around a farm, like machinery, like livestock, like everybody else here inside this room. What's the next step? Um, studied agriculture, went from there on to study uh, or to work on the harvest in the States. Started working with an, uh, an agri dealership, so I got in with them. Went on to Edinburgh, studied a, uh, an ag degree, realized actually, look at studying agriculture is great, but I actually want to move on in the business. And I think these people will, will say this as well having a good concept of business and economics if you want to move things on. So, done a business degree. And at that period, I was moving into Agco as a FENT area sales manager and then progressed through the business. I suppose that the key thing is having the right characteristics to be able to move around the industry. Perfect. Thanks very much, William. And we'll move on to Evelyn, the same question. Um, I'm the marketing manager with Major. Uh, we make um, slurry handling equipment and grass cutting equipment for the agricultural industry. Um, so the family business has been there for 40 years, so I probably always knew I'd eventually work there. So I um, study commerce in German in UCD and German because I wanted the year abroad and a chance to travel and commerce again just to develop the business side that I knew I wanted to pursue. So that's how I ended up in the, working in the business. Enjoying every minute of it, Evelyn. Yeah, yes, yeah, loving it. <laughs> Paul, same question again to yourself. Um, well, down through the years I would have grown up with the family business, so probably started when I was 10 or 11, always kicking around the workshop or whatever. Probably started at the ground up, sweeping the floor and working my way through. Um, then it came to making decisions for college. I suppose on one side of the business, I liked the engineering side and the product development. And then on the other side, I liked the sales side and had a bit of experience on that side in our own retail dealership. So I decided I was going to go down the business route uh, I did a BCom in Galway, um, came out of that course and probably I had my degree but my intention was always to work outside the family business. I didn't want to go in there regardless of what I knew or didn't know about the business as the boss's son. So um, I decided I was going to do a master's, uh, specialised in internet marketing at the time um, and from there then um, I came out and just by chance, I went back working in the factory for three or four months while I was applying for jobs elsewhere and um, got offered three jobs the one week, one with Glennon's Timber in Longford, uh, one with Jury's Doyle Hotels in Dublin and another one with Innes Centre from Asian Edge Town at the time. Chose the job in Dublin, wanted to go in with a PLC. Um, so became responsible for Jury's Inns group and internet for the group and that was two growth areas in that business. So from there, worked there for two or three years, moved on, decided I wanted to travel to Australia, got caught up with our own job in New Zealand then. So I started doing a three week job in New Zealand which turned into about five years. So I was responsible initially for product development with our integrated Bella wrapper, the Fusion. Then it went from there and um, I became responsible for sales and service. Um, got it up to 60, 70% market share uh, in the integrated Bella wrapper sector. And then I got offered a job by a competitor. Um, so that made me think and at that stage, I decided I was going to move home. So went into the business as marketing manager. Didn't have a formal marketing group at the time 
our what was happening was our sales manager was transitioning over when he had a little bit of time. So I tried to put formal marketing department in place and then became involved in product development. So that's pretty much my history. Thanks, Paul. I suppose, um, moving on, I'm just looking at the age profile of uh, a lot of guys in the room. We have we've, we've probably people who are looking to change career and maybe people who are starting their career. So if I was to ask the question maybe of Evelyn and William, just like what Paul described, a little bit more detail about the exact first job and your first kind of moments coming into the industry, Evelyn. Um, well, my first job from the summers was in the stores from about the age of 12. So packing up all the spare parts, taking care of the orders, customers, that kind of thing. So it gave me a great understanding of how the machines were put together and the mechanics of it, because I don't have any formal training in that. So then from there, I went and worked for other companies in kind of sales and marketing positions in agricultural industry and construction companies. And I traveled to Australia and through the UK. And then it was eventually, uh, I suppose like Mikhail's, you know, where formal structure was being put into place to create a marketing department. So the job was offered, did I want to give it a go? So I took it up when I moved home. And 11 years later, you know, we've, we've moved the company on and that's how I got into that position. So. Perfect, and William, your, your very first job? Um, I suppose I started out, you know, like a dairy farm, uh, working, milking cows, the usual thing, contracting, driving a tractor. Um, I suppose the next step of that was um, going into a tractor garage as a junior salesman, which was really a uh, lackey to do just about everything. But uh, it gives you a foot on, on the string. Everybody's in, everybody spoke to today wants the position with Massey Ferguson doing a great job. Well, look, lads, it's simple. It starts small and have big ambition. There are positions, but you have to start somewhere. So it, it's starting well down the rooks. Um, previous to that, I'd worked as a tractor mechanic on a peat bog for probably, I would say, two summers while studying. You know, it puts a basis on you, puts some structure, puts some understanding of the industry into you. You need that before anybody's going to bring you in anywhere. And William, when you said, like, doing all the jobs like in a junior sales role like what could guys expect if they got a junior sales role with one of the agco dealers in the morning what general duties would they be now we're not don't we don't have to get too specific now just <laughs> i suppose look it depends if you go into a dealership today we would like to think that the guy comes in and is offered a proper sort of structure sort of training through the business it's great saying go down this drive sell this sell that and i think you will both agree with this it's having a it's having a structure to encourage a young person irrespective of the position that they know where they go, they know the structure, they have a, a good understanding, good management above them. But I suppose the roles are, yeah, it's going up meeting farmer. If you're not a, if you're not a sort of person who likes to, to socialize, likes to meet people, and likes to be up the face of the business, it's not really for you. It can be a lonely job. You're sat in a car driving around on your own, listening to the radio, hoping that the next farmer will actually talk to you and bring you for a cup of tea. That doesn't always happen. They've got other things to do. Farming is a business place, busy place these days. So I think it's, it's a run around. It's a, it's a lot of different positions. Install machinery, understand machinery. You're expected to be a bit more product leading at that stage. Very flexible person required. I am a very flexible person. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Um, I suppose looking at that, I'm just after listening to all of you and you've traveled. Uh, just bringing it back to Paul, how, how important is travel for young people? I think um, there's a certain amount you can learn in university. And then, as one of our sales guys said to me two weeks ago, he said, there's a lot you learn on the white line as well. And that's traveling up and down the road, going into different farms, meeting different people, looking at things maybe from a different perspective. Um, probably you know, in our company, as William was saying as well, people start from the ground up. So whether you come in with a diploma in engineering or a degree in marketing or a master's in marketing, you'll probably have a good bit to do with the physical product assembly, the factory floor, learning the nuts and bolts, the business, setting up trade shows, whatever the case may be, whatever department you go into. And then from there, um, you work your way through. Within the industry, there's great opportunities to travel. I know the time I spent doing sales in Australia and New Zealand, I spent about five years out there, met some fantastic people, customers we still have, some friends for life, uh, people that if they come to Ireland, they stay with me at the house. Um, probably, it's a great industry. A lot of the people don't change. The companies may change, but the people don't. Uh, for young people coming out of college, there's fantastic opportunities to travel. Like if I look 
probably in our company at the moment, we have people in France, America, Korea, uh, New Zealand. We run a development team in New Zealand for three months every year where the founder of the business goes out with them to develop new products when we don't have grass in Ireland. So the opportunities are endless for the right people. Thanks, Paul. And that's a, that's a very good for the, for the right people and for the, the right mindset. You can't expect a job to come looking for you. So sometimes you have to go and chase the job and pursue it and develop your own expertise in the area. Moving on to you, Evelyn. The, the West of Ireland seems to be a hub for kind of development of engineering works and you know, a, a lot of demand for people to work in that region. How, how does that, what kind of opportunities do you have at the minute? Well, there's at least five big engineering companies now in Mayo and we're all probably looking for the same people. There's huge opportunities, um, you know, and it's, it's the quality of life, you know, there's no contest, you know, you're not sitting in your car for hours every day, you know, but like I'm 10 minutes from work, um, you know, there's, and there's plenty of opportunities. I think probably the other companies are spin off maybe from McHale's and ourselves leaving and setting up their own engineering companies. So that's, you know, there's plenty of opportunities. In our own place at the moment, we're looking for a production manager, somebody with maybe five to seven years experience, you know, somebody who can bring a bit of knowledge as well to ourselves. And um, we're also looking for stores personnel and we're looking for fitters all the time. Um, and welders and also marketing support if I we were looking for anybody like language skills is just seems to be something that it's quite tricky to get staff with good language skills and um, you know Dutch German in particular for us at the moment so that's that's where we're looking for right now brilliant brilliant Evelyn and um, just say in the nature of the senior role for a production manager can you tell us a little bit more about that job? What well, exactly well is basically, that? Well, basically, we began a lean program about two years ago, lean production, and we analyze every aspect of our business, and we're putting systems in place. Our production at the moment is being managed by the general manager, and it's just getting too busy. We're you know, selling across the world. So we need somebody as well who is interested in lean, has the experience to come in and educate us and just bring our production to another level, basically. So anybody who has like experience in lean, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, in the agri-engineering industries, but that's um, who we're looking for at the moment. Uh, and qualification-wise, it doesn't have to be agriculture. Well, preferably mechanical engineering Mechani background. Mechanical yeah, mechanical and, and uh, we would be looking for somebody with you know five to seven years experience. That's who right. we're looking for. And Paul, likewise, I'd say for Michael, is there opportunities there? Yeah, probably as Evelyn has said. Um, there is huge opportunities for the right people. Um, at the moment, we have three market support jobs, one in France, one in Germany, one in Brazil. So we're looking for people there with fluent French, German, or Portuguese. Um, then our design office, 10% of our workforce in Ballinrobe are involved on the R&D side. So they're doing product development, new product development, and product customization based on the market. Um, so Donal Collins is a team of 25 there and he's constantly looking for new mechanical engineers to come through. Likewise, um, we're advertising at the moment for an electronics engineer. Uh, if we could get the right two software engineers, there's definitely jobs for them. Um, outside of that, welders, fitters, uh, people for product support and uh, general operatives as well. So there's loads of opportunities there for the right people. Thanks, Paul. I suppose, William, you're, after, you're, you're working with quite a diverse base like in, in the UK. Um, what, is the, what is the perception of, uh, say, people from the UK or France of Irish people in the workplace? What's the general... No, not to want to see a very loaded question. <laughs> Um, look, I suppose if we look at engineers, we look guys, let's say last year, all the guys we took in as graduates, they were actually Irish. We've one of the guys who works with me here and my team in the UK and Ireland as a product support. He's, his main role is um, in field, on machinery, on equipment. He's also the product lead for the grass equipment back to the factory. Um, one of the other guys on the tag support desk. Um, and then we have another guy who works in the global series of tractors, and he could be anywhere globally. So when we look back upon Irish graduates, they come with quite a high caliber. There's quite a lot come out of, let's say, Harper Adams is quite a good pick on a few of them. And, and to be fair, we, we, we specify what we want out of those people. And to be fair, the Irish graduates come with 
certainly better uh, work etiquette about them. Let's get on and get it done. What I will say to most of them is they need to be more ambitious. Like the, amb the more ambitious people you get are the people who progress through it. Some of the guys want a simple enough role. Like you're looking for process engineers and this sort of thing. Okay, guys, set your goals higher. You know, like uh, the product support role is nice. He should be wanting his boss's job and his boss's job. So it's, it's only the start of where he should want to be. Brilliant. And just, to, I don't know, you mightn't have the figures, but roughly how many Irish people would be working on the Agco side of the house or in Agco in general? Um, in UK sales, there's probably four, five, um, including myself, because obviously they will be based here. But inside of Agco, I wouldn't have a clue, but we've people based, like these other companies, based yeah. in Australia, based in North America, will have come into the business and maybe moved on or even joined Agco while in another country and then move, potentially move back to the UK and Ireland. So we do end up with quite a few people moving around based on that. I couldn't put a number on it. Though, wouldn't Probably just to add to that, I know from my time in Australia and New Zealand when we were doing demonstrations and things like that, uh, two of the fairly senior people in both Fent and Valtra were both Irish. So probably with all the jobs, there is a good opportunity to travel as well. If you come to work for Agco or Major or McHale, you're becoming a product specialist. You're learning probably skills that you can apply in any country around the world. For example, one of our technicians that covered Ireland, UK, wanted to move. He wanted to move to New Zealand. So he moved with his family across. They lived out there for eight years and now they've moved back again. So there's huge opportunities to travel if you're the right person and you have the specialist skills. That's probably a very fair comment that, that Paul's made. I think if we recognise the people, I'm no different. I was based living in Ireland. The company moved me to the UK, and I dare say somebody's got an idea to move me somewhere else, which I mightn't want, but it might happen. So if you are willing to move and you've got the skill set, the businesses will move around you. It's getting your foot on the ladder, getting through, and they'll move families, move everywhere else. Irish are well taken in most places, so there's certainly a big career can be had. Uh, I suppose, Evelyn, if you, if you were looking at... Um Say I ha I've been given the time clock here in five minutes now, and um, so I have to streamline some of the questions. But if you were looking at a CV, or say looking at a potential person that you were going to employ, employ, what qualities do you look for? What standout features would get them to interview? Would get them the chance to talk to you? Well, obviously it depends on the role. But if I get a CV in of somebody who has worked in agri agricultural contracting in the summers from college, I know straight away they're a grafter. You know, it just straight away, you know, there's a good attitude there. Somebody who's made the effort as well. If you know, if you're serious about wanting a job in the agri industry, you've got to go out in the summers and get your work experience, build up your CV, you know, get the experience and ask for it. You know, ring us and say, you know, can I come in and have a look and see what that job's about? You know, that's what I would say. Yeah, and even following on from there, and say that for major and the future of Irish manufacturing, where do you see the company in 10 years? Well, uh, for us, it seems we, it's all about, it's getting, well, our business, we are getting more specialist, more focused, you know, farmers are getting bigger. It's, um, you know, much more specialist, you know, we have concentrated on the, the cost of, say, our tanker side, we concentrate now on the custom design, uh, you know, so we're making bespoke, very specialist, very customized units for farmers. Um, and that's the way we see it going. Even our grass gunning equipment is getting much bigger. It's all about as well, how does it travel, you know, to further a field as well. You know, it has to be big and it has to last the job. Exactly. So for us, that's where it's going. It's all about exporting as well for us. We also have the side of our business. We do um, grass gunning machinery for, for professional applications, golf courses, sports clubs. So for us as well, that's where we're focusing. And again, that's all getting bigger as well and more specialist. So that's where it's going Brilliant. for us. It's, it's a bright future. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Paul, uh, what's a, a definite turn off for you in a CV that one that gets left in this heap over here? Probably, um, you know, I don't know if there's a definite turn off in a CV, but really what you look for in a CV, as Evelyn has said, is ambition. Um, probably if two CVs come on my desk and one guy has a master's and he has won one engineering and another guy comes in and he's a diploma and he has second grade honours or whatever else in that but if he has the relevant experience and it all comes down to the relevant experience the love for machinery the fact that he'll go that extra mile 
that's very, very important. Um, it's about really from when you're um, from when you're 16, 17, how you build your CV from there. Like if, if you're coming into a machinery company, great. It's great to travel, it's great to see how things are done in other countries. But if you're going to an American a J1, try and get relevant experience to the area you're in. If you come back and you have bare experience in Manhattan, I'm sure you had a great time, but does it actually add to your CV? Probably not. Yeah, very good. Thanks a million, Paul. Um, I suppose in, in summary, um, to ask you just sir, for one nugget piece of advice, what I'm getting from here is from the chat says, <coughs> the opportunity for travel and the knowledge you can gain from travel is immense. If you have a language or a speciality in a language, it would be a huge, huge benefit to you in a marketing role. And you have to be willing to start from the ground up that the people, you like to see a CV that has a lot of work, a busy person on it. But if I, I'm going to ask the panel just for, to sum up on this fee, it's just one piece of advice that they can give you as potential young people heading out into this industry. So we'll start with William. Um, the first thing I'd probably say to anybody, it's your own career, it's not your parents' career, it's not your lecturer's career, it's not your employer's career, it's up to you to manage your career. You need to be ambitious with inside of that. Like you've just said, have them one or two little items that make you stand out. Going and doing the bar job is great, you know, but does it add to anything in it? It's having done that job that you've gone somewhere to do, what did I add to it, what makes me stand out? Have a language, have travel, have ambition. There are the keys. Thanks, William. Evelyn? Yeah, similar to that and what I was saying earlier, you know, if you really want to do this like that, you know, it's your responsibility. Get out there, get your work experience, build up your CV, you know, and take it from there. Make your decisions after that then from whatever college degree you want to do. But if you show that you've made the effort and you've got a good attitude towards work, you know, you'll, you'll have no problem getting work. And we'll finish up with you, Paul. Probably overall, you know, um, from talking to a lot of the companies in the room and knowing the companies in the room, if, if you take it at the moment, the jobs where there is skills shortages at the moment is people with an understanding of agriculture um, with languages. Also on the electronic engineering side, on the software engineering side, I know if you talk to companies like Dairy Master, CombiLift, ourselves, we're all looking for people in those areas to drive export sales. Nine out of every 10 machines we make, or 90% of our production is export. That goes into 50 countries. That creates huge opportunities, but it also creates huge challenges. So if you can position yourself, if you want to work regionally outside of Dublin, if you can position yourself in a role that's really required, that will give you huge opportunities to move through a business um, our business grows at 20% per year, so there's always new roles opening up for the right people. Thanks very much, Paul. We have to uh, end it there, unfortunately, and I'd just like to say an extreme thanks to our panel, Paul, Evelyn, and William. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll give them a round of applause first if we can get them. If you have any questions, uh, I'll be here on the edge of the stage, and the, the guys might hang around. They're very busy people. They have lots of people to talk to today, but we might get them for just five minutes if any have just questions that you want to ask. Thank you very much.